Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, this video is not sponsored, and this is the Logitech G Pro wireless mouse. And the big advantage is really in the name. It's got no wires, it's wireless. And this is something that would have been considered sort of crazy only a couple years ago really because wireless mice traditionally have had terrible input delay compared to their wired counterparts. That might be a thing of the past though because recently, you know, only a little over a year ago, Logitech started releasing mice that have their new light speed wireless technology that claims to be as good, the exact same input delay latency quality of input as a wired mouse, no drops, nothing. And at first I was skeptical, but it's been out for a year. The tests are in, people have done countless tests. It's, it's legit, it literally is the same as a wired mouse. And like I said, it's been out for over a year. A lot of new tech like this, it looks really good when it's brand new, but you find manufacturing defects that wind up really uh, mud muddying the product up after a couple of months or so. And for these mice, you know, I know a lot of people with this mouse and it hasn't broken. It's just like new from the day they got it a year ago. So about a month ago, I wanted to test it out for myself. Normally my daily driver is the Razer Death Adder, but I've been switching back and forth every day. Um, you know, I'll play, I'll play a game, half of it on the Death Adder, half of it on the G Pro Wireless. I'll give you more details about my thoughts in just a bit, but overall I'll just tell you that I was impressed. Now I did a bunch of tasks, basically every task from work to video editing to playing games, first person shooters, RTS games, just everything under the sun. Uh, 3D, 2D, but personally, the game that I focused on in terms of my performance in this game really is the determiner for whether this mouse is worth its salt or not, was Osu. A lot of people have been testing in 3D environments like, like Counter-Strike and PUBG and um, like Rocket Jump Ninja has a great video and he does all the Quake stuff, for example, but I didn't really see a lot in the 2D space, so I figured I might as well fill that. Uh, lots of people play StarCraft, Dota, League of Legends, and Osu is really the two-dimensional game that's going to push your hardware and push what you need to the limits. I mean, we're talking two, three, four millisecond jumps sometimes. If you have, if you're one millisecond off in latency, you're definitely going to notice it, right? I'm going to put some side by sides of me playing with the Death Adder versus me playing with the G Pro on the same song. Remember, I've been using the Death Adder for like six years. It's been my main mouse for basically my entire mod, like adult life, I guess. Whereas I only got the G Pro a month ago. So I've been pretty impressed with it in that regard also. But in the meantime, let's go over some of the features of the mouse just so you get an idea of, you know, just sort of the basics. Now I'm gonna come out with kind of my least favorite part of the mouse first, and that's its design, it's ambidextrous. I'm personally used to the more ergonomic right-handed look of the Death Adder. I feel like it just gives me a better grip, it fits in my hand better. Uh, that that is the main thing that took me the most getting used to is the shape, the ambidextrous shape. And while I do think that it is objectively a bit superior to have a, either a right-handed or a left-hand only design, I think that overall the actual difference once I got used to the shape is really kind of negligible. The side buttons can be swapped to either the left-hand or the right-hand side, of course, or both actually. You can put them on both sides. So if you play an MMO or Fortnite or something that has wonky uses for extra buttons, it's got you covered there. The mouse wheel has pretty good tension on its steps and they're crisp, so you're unlikely to accidentally move on to the next step, like on a mouse uh, like the Death Adder, for example, that has a bit of a looser feel to the mouse wheel. The distance between the steps is also pretty short and the radius of the wheel itself is on the slightly smaller side, making it pretty good for bunny hopping, uh, especially like Counter-Strike, for example, is the primary game for that. It's, you know, it's definitely meant more for gaming than browsing because it does feel a little more annoying to use for everyday use than my Death Adder, which has a bit more of a luxurious feel, but um, the performance, the technical performance in games is just phenomenal. The DPI switch on this mouse is on the bottom, which I love because I never use like these silly things that you find like every gaming mouse has these nowadays and they really just get in the way for me. You can rebind these to do something useful, uh, but I never do that. So there's probably a nice use case. 
that you lose with the G Pro Wireless, uh, but like I said, I don't miss it. I like it being out of the way on the bottom. You'll never accidentally press it. The plastic is quite smooth. It's not as textured as other mice I've seen, or like my Death Adder, for example. This theoretically means it has a little bit less grip, and I can actually feel it, but even in a long Osu song or after a full round of Counter-Strike or Overwatch or something, I never lost my grip, which is really all that matters. So at the end of the day, I guess I'm gonna have to call the grip perfectly fine, right? Uh, now it has a plate at the bottom, which is used for Logitech's fancy wireless mouse pads, but I, I don't use those, making it a great way to instead adjust the weight. This is pretty light at only 80 grams, but I'm used to a heavier mouse, and if you're used to a heavier mouse, or if you like a heavier mouse, uh, I, I really like this pocket because you can actually put in magnetic weights here to increase the weight. You can put anything in there, really. Or you can even remove it to decrease the weight a little bit by like four grams or so if you want an even lighter mouse. So here, here's my take on the matter, right? Features, they're fine. They're like normal, decent features for a mouse. But this mouse is wireless, which you can tell by my intro, sort of blows my mind. Here's the deal though. If this mouse is equivalent at all, I mean like, if this can be considered at all an equivalent to a wired mouse, then in my mind, it just straight up wins right off the bat. Like there's nothing you can, there's nothing that tops that. Like there's no feature that's better than being wireless. Once you have a comparable sensor, a comparable input delay, latency, Really, the main thing that messes up your aim is the fact that you're tethered to a wire. The biggest performance increase you can get is by removing the wire. Now, there are some attempts at solutions. You can buy a bungee, which lets you sort of tether your, your mouse cable up to make it so it's not quite in the way, but it's not perfect and you can still feel it. And in fact, you can feel it a lot more than I thought you could. I, you know, I've just, a lot of people just get used to the wire, right? You just get used to it, you work with it, you stop noticing it after a while. But once you take the wire away, it's like a, a weight is lifted. It's like you're in weighted training clothes and you take the wire away and suddenly you have way more movement, particularly in the Y axis, that's the front and back axis because that's where the wire really gets in your way the most. I felt so much more freedom. The biggest advantage is for games that have you go long distances. Like in an FPS game, when you need to spray, like in Counter-Strike, you need to go really far down. In PUBG, you need to go really far down. It can get awkward after very long sprays because you get really far down. The tension on the, the mouse cable is not quite the way you expect it to be. With a wireless mouse, it's not a problem. Or if you need to turn around 180, you need to move your mouse all the way over here and it's no longer in that comfort position where you used, you're used to what the tension on the cable feels like. And if you need to stay there, sure, you can home your mouse. You can like pick it up and, and put it back to home. But again, with a wireless mouse, you can just be there and it's just as if nothing happened. Really, I just can't overstate this. The, sh the sheer fact that a wireless mouse that performs the same as a wired mouse is always gonna win no matter what. I just think that that's way too much of an advantage. But there are other Logitech mice that have their light speed technology. This is not the only one. The problem is they're either not rechargeable, which means you just waste a bunch of money on like AAA or AA or whatever batteries they use, or they look like this. I, I don't know who designed this mouse, but uh... the only mouse that I consider really in the same ballpark is the G703, which same tech, same sensor, same everything, same insides basically, but it is heavier and more ergonomic more like what I'm used to with the Death Adder. The G Pro has over double the battery life though. So while I am more familiar with the shape, I don't think that familiarity is a good reason for a long-term mouse decision because you'll get familiar to anything. The only real gamer I could see not wanting this mouse is if you had some sort of very specialty like MMO where you required a lot of super crazy buttons and not necessarily crazy, super pixel perfect precision. You know, this this mouse is pretty bare bones, right? It doesn't have a ton of buttons. So something like one of those crazy mice with all the buttons on the side, probably more down your alley. But again, that's a very specific, specific person. The only other argument really is the price. At $150, actually, it's, uh, it's actually on sale right now. Just complete coincidence randomly. I'll link down below the Amazon page, but I think it's like $15 off or something right now. But uh, you know, at $150 normal price, it's pretty expensive. But in reality, when it comes to peripherals, the mouse is the first thing you should buy. Beyond like, take it out of your keyboard budget, take it out of your headset budget, take it out of, uh, I mean, you probably don't have a microphone budget, but take it out of that. 
a monitor is pretty important. Like I would say 144 hertz monitor is up there. Mouse, probably the next thing, like really, really touching it. A good mouse, a good monitor, you can go forever. You know, your keyboard can wait, your $150 keyboard can wait. Your, you know, fancy super microphone can wait. The, the mouse is the big deal. So while it is expensive, it is the most important peripheral. So it, it, you can kind of carve it out of the, bu the budget a little bit. And like I said, this this isn't a budget mouse video, but if you truly, like while you're here, if you truly are on a budget and you're kind of bummed out, like, oh man, I don't have $150. Like I said, the G703 is only $100. Well, like I said, at that point, if you're gonna spend $100, you kind of maybe want to just go all the way. But uh, I, I just have to recommend the mouse I've been using for years is Death Adder, only $40. And it's just a phenomenal mouse. No super fancy stuff, but it's always supported. They upgrade it constantly. Every time there's a new sensor out, new sensor tech, they always upgrade it so you never have to get rid of the body. It's just uh, it's just been super good, super solid mouse. And uh, yeah, I know Razer gets flack, but this mouse is the most popular for a reason. And you always find it everywhere. You can borrow it, you find support for it. The drivers are always on everyone's computers. It's not a problem. Once again, I have linked all three mice that I talked about in this video down in the description. At the time of this video, I'm pretty sure the G Pro is on sale, which is a happy coincidence. I didn't time it out or anything like that. It just sort of happened, I suppose. Um, let me know in the comments what mouse you use, if you think my opinion's terrible, if you think it's wonderful. But, uh, give people advice down there because I, I, it's a question that uh, people ask all the time is mice. You know, you don't, wanna, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want your mouse to be holding you back. And that's the key thing. Any of the three mice I talked about in this video won't hold you back. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, join my Discord channel. It's awesome. Lots of cool people there. Bell me. Subscribe to me. You got to do that first, though. And I will see you in the next video. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day.